It's yesterday, I like penguins. Happy Feet. That movie is amazing. Yeah. That used to be the what? What? Okay. On that note, over to vectors. Okay. So, vector is a... So, the word vector is a term that you've heard, possibly in your science classes. So, a vector, or in Despicable Me, a vector is something that has both a magnitude and a direction. For example, velocity is a vector quantity. Force is a vector quantity. Okay, so why is velocity a vector quantity as opposed to something that is not a vector quantity is a scalar. A scalar is something that has only a magnitude but no direction. So for example, if I'm in the car and I say, hey, I look at the speedometer and I say, hey, I'm traveling at 62 miles an hour. That's my speed. That's a scalar quantity. If I am in my car and I say, hey, I'm traveling 62 miles an hour and I'm going east, that is a vector because I've now given you two pieces of information about my speed, which is the magnitude, the quantity, the number, and the direction. That's a vector quantity. Okay? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, um, again, velocity, 6 meters per second east. Speed is just 6 meters per second. So, let's take a look at these couple of examples. A ball thrown northwest at 60 meters per second, vector or scalar? Vector. Okay. Oh. All right. A tennis ball served at 110 miles an hour? Scalar. And the other one, C? Vector. Fabulous. Okay, so in math, the way in which vectors are represented is by an arrow diagram, which we also call a directed line segment. They look very much like rays that you've learned about in geometry. Remember in geometry, a ray was something that had an endpoint on one side, but it continued forever and ever on the other side. That's what a vector is. It has um, the end point, which we call the initial point or the tail. I like initial point better because it's less confusing. Um, and then there is also a terminal point or head or tip. Okay, I like to use initial point and terminal point. It's more um, descriptive. Okay, how do we label a vector? A vector is labeled in two different ways. One is using capital letters for the initial and the terminal points. So in this case, A is the initial point, B is the terminal point. So this vector starts at A and ends at B, okay? But it does have an arrow on that end. So it's not exactly like a ray because it doesn't go on forever, it does end somewhere, but there is an arrow which signifies the direction of the vector. Okay, so to label this vector, you have to use, um, if you're using the endpoints, you have to use both of the endpoints. So we say this is vector AB. You have to start at the initial and you have to end at the um, final point. So it can't be BA, it has to be AB. Now, just like geometry, this has a symbol above it and this is a half arrow that looks like that. Okay, so we, we do it in one stroke, it's like that. Okay, so it's just a half arrow. So this can be vector AB, or we can give it a lowercase name, a letter, so it'll also be lowercase a, like that. Both of these are equally okay to label that vector. Now, in, like when you're handwriting, right, these are the two accepted notations for vector. In the books, however, they would just do like a bold little a, which is also the same thing as a with the vector symbol on top. Okay? Oh. 
Well, I mean, we don't really use that language, but yeah, it starts at A and goes to B. Yes. Okay. So now, a vector in standard position is when you take the vector and you basically put the initial point at the origin, just like any. It look, it, it's like similar to an angle, but it's not an angle. Okay. Now, when you have a vector like that, like this is a vector in the um, standard position. Okay. Let's talk about magnitude first. The magnitude of the vector is physically the length of that segment, which we say vector A in absolute value bars. Okay. So like this. This is the magnitude of the vector. Okay. Not it's power, not it's the vector symbol. Okay, so if I were to um, s tell you like what the um, magnitude of this vector is, I would actually take a ruler and measure this, right? And I would say, okay, it's like this many centimeters, that's the magnitude. Now, most of the time, like we talked about, vectors um, represent velocity or force or something. Now, if this vector represents like the velocity of, our, of an airplane, right, going at 760 miles an hour, I'm not going to draw a vector that's 760 units long. That's just absurd, right? So we scale it down. So for example, this vector here, right, it says one centimeter represents five feet per second. And then if I take out a ruler and measure this, this is actually going to measure 2.6 centimeters. I know because I've done it. So this magnitude, this vector has a magnitude of 13 feet per second, right? 5 times 2.6. Everybody okay with this? Okay. Now, let's talk about direction. So lots of times, um, a vector is a way to say, how do you go from A to B, right? So how would I get there? Well, you can't, so... Instead of saying, okay, go to the you know, right this many steps and go up this many steps, we can just say, draw a segment that is 2.6 centimeters and then rotate it 35 degrees. And more often than not, the angle of rotation is how we can precisely give the direction of a vector. Okay? Yes. So if, I have, so if this pen represents a vector and I want to give the direction, right, like starting from the standard position, I go, okay, it's rotated 40 degrees, and so I know exactly where it points, okay? So the direction of a vector is the angle between the vector and the horizontal line. Okay, so let's talk more about direction of a vector. Um, to find the direction of a vector you have to, um, so this is vector A, right? This blue one is vector A. What you have to do is starting at the initial point, you have to draw a horizontal line. So you draw that line, and then this is pretty much zero degrees. Then what you have to do is you have to measure this angle right? So suppose this is 115 degrees, that would be the direction of your vector, all right? So suppose I had, you know, my vector A looked like this, and I told you, okay, find the direction of that vector. What you do is always the same. You draw a horizontal line at the initial point of this vector. The initial point is here. You draw a horizontal line and that's your zero degrees, right? Remember when we measured angles, this was always zero degrees. So same situation. And then from that, you have to go in the positive angle direction. So um, counterclockwise, and that would be the angle. So let's say, you know, the direction of this is 200 degrees. So this is used a lot, right? Like in um, <clears throat> flight or um, when it comes to like... Um, like ships and things, right? Because like, like if somebody's on a ship, you're not going to tell them to go like 17 paces left and, you know, 15 paces. Like that's just, you know, so we, we just like give them like a steering angle. Okay, let's talk more about vectors. 
What are parallel vectors? Well, they're, the, um, they're vectors that go in the same or opposite direction, but they're not necessarily the same magnitude. So for example, um, look at vector A over here. What are some vectors that are parallel to A? B, C, E as well, and also F. Whoops. Okay. Okay. Um, equivalent vectors are actually identical vectors. They have the same magnitude and the same direction. So, for example, here vector A is equivalent to vector C. Opposite vectors are vectors that have the same magnitude but opposite direction. So, for example, vector E and vector A are opposite vectors, right? The way in which you say that is E is the negative of A, right? So vector E is the negative of vector A. What that means is they have the same magnitude, but because one is the negative of the other, the negative represents direction. So they go in opposite direction. Okay. Um, for the uh, parallel vector part, why did you put the two lines in between? Parallel. That means parallel. It's a blast from the past. Yep. Why would E and A be opposite vectors even though they're like not the, like exactly different? Directions? So they're parallel, but they're in opposite direction. You see E and A? You um, see how they're parallel, but they go, they point in opposite directions. Yeah. Okay. So. Remember in the last chapter, we had matrices and we learned how to add matrices and it was, you know, kind of different from adding whole numbers, right? Because now you're dealing with matrices. Well, vectors is a whole other situation. To add vectors, right, the situation is different. First of all, the sum of two vectors isn't called a sum, it's called a resultant, okay? So, to find resultant vectors, by the way, there are two methods. One is the triangle method, which we're going to use. The other one is a parallelogram method. We're not going to use it, and it's okay. Your life will not be any different because of it, okay? All right, so to find vector A plus vector B. Now, this is a whole other situation. What you do is you start with vector A, right? Do you see how vector A starts at this point? point at the top sort of and it ends where I have E right this is the starting and ending right and then vector B starts here and ends there right so basically what you do you have to translate or shift vector B so that the initial point is at the end point of this one so wherever this ends the other one has to start okay so I'm physically going to take this vector and move it over there, all right? When I do that, the bottom diagram is what I get. Do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. So this A vector ended here, B starts where the other one ends. Now, where is the very beginning of your first vector? Up to the left, correct? Where is the very end of your last vector? up to the right. What you now have to do is you have to connect the very beginning to the very end with a brand new vector. That vector, that is the sum of these two vectors. That vector is called A plus B. Okay? Yep. Yep. So now look. So this is the resultant vector, and you can label it R for resultant, and it's exactly the same as vector A plus vector B. Okay, one way to figure this out is, suppose vector A and B are like a route somebody takes from their house to the store. Like they go down, and then they go over, so basically they start here and they end there. What's another way to start at the same place and end at the same place? Along A plus B. You see that? Okay. All right. So now we found A plus B. That's the actual vector A plus B. That's the actual resultant. 
But then after that, I'll get questions in a second. We have to find sometimes magnitude of R and direction of R. The magnitude is the physical size. The direction is the angle from zero degrees. Okay, Jack and then River. Did you have a question? Oh. Say that again. Right. The sum, the resultant vector is just that green vector. Yeah. Sorry. In my peripheral, I saw a hand. It was you. So, um, not really. It doesn't matter. Okay. Because it is commutative. Yep. Um, if, let's say the commute was just, it was longer mm -hmm. and the angle of mm -hmm. A and B mm -hmm. was different, then that would be the angle mm -hmm. of the resultant? Like you would take it. The angle of the resultant, yes. The angle of the resultant, once you draw the resultant, you forget about A and B, and you just find the angle of the resultant. Okay, okay yep. Wait, but isn't the, the direction, like you said, it starts like, uh, is the angle from zero degrees to zero degrees, isn't that start the result? Okay, let's do a couple, and then um, let's do this next one, and I'll show you. Let's do this next one, and I'll show you how to find the resultant, okay? The angle, I mean. Okay, so take a look. Here we've got like some random vectors just like, you know, thrown at the page. So um, we're going to draw a resultant. And like before I used to make students like go really precise, but I don't really need you guys to do that. But here's what we're going to do. You see this vector V? I'm basically just going to reproduce it. And I'm going to eyeball it a little bit here because I didn't leave enough space. So that's vector V. I'm just going to redraw it here. W now has to go over here. Yes? Yeah. That's W. Okay? Vector R, which is the resultant of V plus W, goes from here all the way to there. That is V plus W. Okay? So if I were to ask you to find the resultant of this, I do need like the three vectors here and the arrows have to be drawn at the correct place. Okay. Now, to find the resultant of that green vector, where does the green vector start? Right here. Yeah? You draw a horizontal line at the start of it. And then the angle from that black line over to the green, that's the angle. That's the direction. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So don't fix it too much on that yet because we're going to have lots of opportunities to do it. So take a look at this one. This is kind of interesting. So take a look at vector A. I think I'm just going to keep them where they are. I'm just going to draw um, the red on top of like, you know, where the blue is. So the blue vector ends here, right? Now, starting from there, I'm going to draw the red vector in exactly like the same direction. So that would go this way, right? So what about the green vector? If you were to draw something from the very beginning to the very end, what would that look like? There is nothing, right? The, the resultant vector is zero. So you would say A plus negative A is just zero. Okay. So take a look at this one. 25 newtons north. So let's draw a vector that represents 25 newtons north here. We're going to do it like this. 25 units. Just eyeball it for now. You don't have to scale it. 25 newtons north. Then 35 newtons south. So where would I start the second vector where the first one ended? Which direction am I going to go? down 35 a little bit longer 
Okay, so where does the green arrow go? From the very beginning to the very end. So that's the resultant. So it's negative 10, okay? So the resultant is 10 newtons south. <clears throat> it's from the end of one. It's from the very beginning to the very end. So it's from the beginning of the first to the end of the other. Okay? So, no. Okay, so look. The first one, okay, the first one started here, right? Where I'm circling. And then where did the second one end? The second one, the red, ended here. So it's got to go that way. It's 35 newtons. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you want to do it like a little bit like uh, like this place, like a little bit to the left so you could see them so they're not like sitting on top of each other, it's totally fine. Okay, so what is a scalar? Remember a scalar in uh, matrices? It was just like a regular old number. That's the same thing here. When you multiply a vector by a scalar, you would just make it that many times bigger. Okay? Oh, my vector A is missing here. There was supposed to be another vector A. Does yours have it? Oh, okay. So, sorry, uh, one of my vectors is missing here. So this was supposed to be vector A. I don't know where it went. And then this is vector 3A. So it keeps the same direction, it just makes it three times bigger, okay? All right, next. Um, let's draw this one. Oh, there's that vector A. Look at where it went. Uh, <laughs> it went all the way down there. I don't know how that happened. Yeah, found it. Okay. Don't you hate it when your vectors go missing? I know. Okay, so we're now, okay, so we have vector x and vector y. We're going to draw vector 3x minus 3 fourths y. That's the same as 3x plus negative three-quarter y, okay? So let's reproduce vector x, um, 3x here. So we're just going to make it, you know, like three times as long. That's 3x, okay? So look, this is vector y, right? Three-quarters y is about that big, yeah? But it says it's the negative of it. So from here, we're going to draw a negative 3 quarters y. Which way are we going to go, up or down? Down. down? down this way. Okay? This is 3 quarters y, but I want to go in the downward direction. So this is negative 3 quarters y. But this is not 3x plus whatever y. This is just one vector and then there's another vector nearby. The sum, this sum, is that green vector here. Okay? Now that is 3x, whoops. Does it matter which way that green arrow is pointing? Oh, yes. But how do you know it's not like pointing up? You have to go from the very beginning to the very end. Okay, start at the beginning, go to the end. So why is minus three oh, minus three fourths y. Sorry. Okay. All right. So the arrows absolutely make a difference. Imagine you're in the control tower of an airplane and you give somebody like the opposite direction in the plane. Like you would send them to, I don't know, like to Australia instead of like you know new york or something you know what i mean like it's and you don't want to do that okay okay because then yeah that's like that's what southwest does anyway i don't have anything against southwest right well now they're actually better than southwest 
<laughs> I don't know. I mean, given all the bad luck people had with Southwest. Southwest is operating a different system. Instead of having like 112 systems. Right. I'm just poking fun. Okay. Okay, so, so take a look here. These two vectors, the green, no, no, sorry. The red and the blue added to create the green, correct? These two are called components of that green vector. Now, these are not the only two vectors that would add to create that green vector. So for example, if I were to give you some random vector and I would say, draw two vectors that would add to that, you have a thousand possibilities. Here's one possibility. Here is another possibility. Um, here's another possibility, right? All of those add to create that green vector. Each of those pairs is a pair of components to that vector, all right? Now, if you did have a green vector and you wanted to draw two that added to it, the most logical ones, it turns out, are if you draw two components that are perpendicular to each other. So one is horizontal and one is vertical. Why? Because when we deal with the x-axis and the y-axis, it's perpendicular, horizontal, vertical, and we know how to deal with that, okay? So vector components, add to create a vector r. Um, when we draw the components, the, the language we use is resolve a vector into its rectangular components, right? This one time, this was a password to a math party. Resolve the components into the, right? Resolve a vector into its rectangular components. So how do we draw rectangular components for this vector? We start at the beginning the initial point. Okay, so the point is to draw two vectors that add to that, right? So one is going to go this way, and another is going to go that way. Okay, and I call this vector x, and I call that vector y. Now, the arrows again are important. How do you go from the initial point to the end point? Well, you have to go to the right and up. So your two vectors have to go to the right and up, okay? Here, how do you go from the initial to the end? You have to go to the left and up. So your two vectors have to go to the left and up, okay? Questions? Okay, are you gonna ask if you can draw them in another orientation? Okay, so you can also draw these vectors that way and this way, okay, it's exactly the same thing. Because look, the y vector is the same as the other y vector, and the x vector is the same as the other x vector. It doesn't matter where they are, it just matters their direction and their magnitude. Any other questions? Okay. So let's do these two problems. Okay. While digging in his garden, Will pushes a shovel into the ground with a force of 630 newtons at an angle of 70 degrees with the ground. All right. Draw a diagram that shows the resolution of the force that Will exerts in, um, into his rectangular components. Okay, so let's draw the vector. Okay, this is the vector, right? He draws this, um, he is, basically he's got a shovel and he's like digging into the ground, right? And he's got like an angle of 70 degrees with the ground. So the force that he's exerting is going through his arms, through that vector into the ground in this direction, okay? Now, so we have to draw a diagram that shows the resolution into its rectangular components. So let's draw the rectangular components here. Here's the Y vector. Here's the x vector, and oh yeah, this has a direction of 70 degrees with the ground. The 630 is this one, the magnitude of this. Okay, so now look. So 
So now look, I've got this chair here, right? Okay, look at the force that I'm exerting on this chair. It's diagonal, yes? It's along my arm. So now if I push this, which way does the force, which way does the chair go? Horizontal. Horizontal. It doesn't go diagonally into the, like into the second floor, right? Like it's like into the first floor, like it doesn't go into the ground here, right? Which tells you that that diagonal force kind of gets split between some downward and some horizontal. Those are the components of this, okay? So some of my force gets split into a vertical component and some into a horizontal component. And it's only that horizontal part that pushes this chair, okay? So now, that's what we did here. Now, we have to find the magnitudes of the horizontal and the vertical components of the force. We literally have to figure out how big is x, how big is y. How would you do that? Mm. No, sine and cosine. Because we have a right triangle and an angle. Okay, so let's do, okay. So, cosine of 70, let's do it in red. Cosine of 70, I mean in blue for this one. Cosine of 70 is the magnitude of vector x over 630. Correct? So, Katoa. So, the magnitude of vector x is 630 cosine 70. Okay? So, we plug this into the calculator and we get 215.5 newtons. Why is the x in the capacitor down? Because it means magnitude. That means magnitude of x. Okay, so what about y? We're going to do sine for y. Sine of 70 is magnitude of y over 630. So the magnitude of y is 630 sine of 70. So the magnitude of y is 592.0 newtons. Yes, for sure. So now look, vector x plus vector y add and the resultant is 630. Do the magnitudes have like a just a straight sum to 630? No. no they don't and it will never be like that because adding vectors is not like adding numbers all right so let me um let me go over a couple of things before we move to the next one we never want to recreate this wheel every single time okay so we have to see what is it that the magnitude is equal to of the x component? Well, this, this is the magnitude of the, um, this is the magnitude of like the initial force, right? 630. And then this is cosine of the angle. And here, this is the magnitude times the sine of the angle and it's always going to be like that so let's do let's do the other one a player kicks a soccer ball so that it leaves the ground with a velocity of 44 feet per second at an angle of 33 degrees with the ground okay and that's the picture well, now we have to draw a diagram with the resolution of the force okay great so this is um, vector v for velocity it's 44 feet per second and the angle is 33 degrees so um, this is the x component and this is the y component and then you have to put that this is 33 degrees that's that's it for part a to get full credit I need to see the angle. I need to see the arrow placed in the proper, like all three arrows where they are, okay? Now, find the magnitude of the horizontal and the component, uh, and the vertical components. So, for the x component, all we do is, we say, okay, this is the magnitude of the, of the full vector times cosine of 33 so that's going to be 
36.9 feet per second. And then what's the y component going to be then? Uh, 44 sine 33, which is 23.96 feet per second. Okay, that's that. Now, do you remember way back in the day when we first were doing trig and we're doing like, you know, the unit circle and I kept wanting to hammer into your brain that cosine is always the x and sine is always the y. This was the reason why we were doing that because wherever you go, when you're doing vectors, even when you're doing vectors, the horizontal component is always the cosine the vertical component is always the sine. It's the same when you're doing physics. It's the same when you're doing math, right? So this is why, you know, like in the beginning, I really want to make sure we get across that the sine is the y, the cosine is the x. Okay, so as a summary, the magnitudes of the horizontal and vertical components are just this, okay? And that's where we can stop.